So here we are at the Institute of Heart Math in Boulder Creek, California. We're going to be talking to Bruce Cryer, who's the CEO. And uh, yeah, what I'm really interested in is to find out how the, uh, a little bit more about the scientific aspect of the heart and how it really benefits um, people and organizations. Um, and they've done over 20 years of research in this area and have a lot of scientific evidence of how um, the heart can, can benefit and how being in a state of coherence can, can have benefits in, in organizations. And there's a lot of evidence that there's, first of all, a lot of intelligence in the heart itself as in an actual brain structure that exists within the heart. It's a complex neuronal structure of 40,000 neurons where actual processing of information is happening in the human heart. This is not a theory, it's been measured, it's, it's valid. It's, a, it's a, There's a medical textbook called Neurocardiology, which is the study of the brain and the heart. It's also known now there's a brain in the gut, a very complex nervous system that functions as a brain. Part of the challenge is when calling things a brain and a brain and a brain is we tend to think, wait a minute, is my gut thinking? Some people would say, yeah, I listen to my gut. In fact, a lot of people in business have an easier time saying, I follow my gut than they have saying, I follow my heart. There's lots of ways we tend to look at intelligence, but a simple way that we've tended to look at it is that the mind is an incredible tool that is often derailed or made less effective by runaway emotions. The heart is often the part of ourselves that picks up the pieces when things have gone that broken. We kind of come back to our heart and say, you know what, everything's going to be okay. That's not necessarily a rational thought. It's not necessarily an analytical process going on, but it's another part of our own being that's saying, you know what, I've made it through before, things will be okay. So ultimately in a way what heart math is trying to do is get those things working together because we tend to, we, 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 we are so split. We believe for 200 years in the West, not necessarily everywhere else in the world, but in the West we believe the sky is just a pump. It's, why would you follow a pump? <laughs> why would you use that in business? The heart's just about emotion. It's not about higher thinking. It's not about intuition. It's not about courage. It's not about love. It's not about all that stuff. It's just a pump. So there's this, been this significant disconnect. What we've found is that this idea of using the heart is not just a sweet metaphor. It's actually a... a professional necessity. I had just come from another phone call, somebody else had just come from another meeting, somebody else had just come from playing. You know, you're coming from something to the next meeting and you often carry that with you, so why not take a minute or two to get yourselves collectively centered around this experience now. And so doing that as a way to kind of get in, get in sync with your heart and your brain working together is a practice we do here and encourage our clients to do. And uh, many organizations have figured out, wow, this, this, is, this is not a time eater, this is one minute. And giving everybody the chance to do that, you know, almost everybody responds you know, in any organization saying, ah, thank you. The world is changing too fast and things get out of balance so fast and businesses are going like that these days if, if you're not aligned. So I think it's a very healthy thing going on now where the, where the younger people entering the management ranks are saying, it's, it's got to be different. I, I feel differently about my life than maybe you did 30 years ago. And I think the good news is a lot of us, our age, are saying, guess what, I'm there with you. But I think there's an, an, an irresistible momentum, kind of an unstoppable force that over the next several years will continue to go in that direction, especially as the world's getting more chaotic and more stressful. We've done dozens of clinical studies showing improvements in health outcomes, dozens of examples with clients where we've measured everything from patient satisfaction to customer satisfaction to healthcare costs and many, many kinds of things. What we found in general is that um, an executive considering bringing in something like this cares about the return they're going to see, the return on investment they're going to see, or they want to know that there's some kind of data that gives them security that if they, if they test this out, they set these, out, these ideas out, it's liable to produce this kind of an outcome. I love this story because we didn't know what we were going to get in those days back in 1994, 1995. We had an opportunity to work with Motorola and um, they gave us three groups of employees to work with, a group of executives in their headquarters, a, a software engineering team whose job was to create, come up with new products all the time and write as many patents as they could and create new technologies, and then a group of factory workers who were uh, building two-way radios in a factory in Florida. 
we saw benefits um, in the case of the executive team. Uh, measuring productivity is difficult in a white collar job. Um, we were measuring health outcomes in that case. 20% of the group that went through the program were had high blood pressure prior to learning Hartman. They all were normal three months later. So their health had changed pretty significantly. The software engineering team not only found that their team working improved dramatically, they doubled the number of patents they were able to write as a result of going through this training. So basically their, their stress was lower, which enabled them to communicate more effectively with each other because they're not like, you know, they're intensely kind of bound up, if you will. So their output improved. In the case of the factory workers in Florida, um, the quality improved, so a 20%, a 22% reduction in defects. There was also a strong uh, physiological benefit where there's a dramatic improvement in sleep. One of the things that, of course, happens with stress is we're extremely tired after a stressful day, but we still can't sleep. <laughs> so the issue is not tiredness. The issue is your body is still going because your mind's usually still going. You're still annoyed about some problem that happened or you're worried about something tomorrow, so you can't shut that down so you can't sleep, but you're still tired. So there's a dramatic improvement in sleep for all of these groups that I, that I named. Um, it was so strong that we actually won an award inside Motorola and they, they actually began a PR campaign because they were very proud of the sort of very people-centered, heart-centered initiative that had been ex that hundreds of their employees had been exposed to. So it takes a few seconds while it's trying to find your heartbeat and establish a solid signal. Okay. And once it has done that, it'll start flashing uh, a blue light down here and that flashing blue light, which it's doing now, that's your pulse. Okay. So it's found your pulse. And now what it's doing is these lights here are moving up and down the strip. And that acts as what we call a breath pacer. So basically you breathe in the same rhythm as those lights. So as the lights, um, uh, as the lights move, move up the strip, breathe in. As the lights move back down the strip, breathe out. And imagine that you're, you're drawing the air in through your heart as you do it. And then I think this is where we, you were actually starting to practice the technique a little bit more. So as soon as you breathe deeper, um, that's when the pattern gets, gets smoother and deeper. So it, this is just a, a part of what's fun about having the two work mm. together now mm. uh, is the fact that you can do the session anywhere, mm. but then at some point in the future, whenever you want to actually see what you did, mm. you plug it in, download it, and now you can see it on the screen like with the, the live session. The feedback is huge because I think the technique itself is sort of, yeah, that makes sense. And maybe you'd even do something like that already. You may pause yourself at certain times and say, okay, I gotta get balanced now. I need to step back and clear my head. Most people do something sort of similar to that, but they never had any way to check whether that was actually doing anything. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to get pulled right back into the stress or the problem or the issue and not necessarily change mm -hmm. the internal state, but alone your perception of what the event may have been. What we've discovered in the, in the stress research is that any time we feel a stress reaction, such as feeling annoyed, feeling overwhelmed, feeling frustrated, that begins a cascade of 1,400 biochemical events in our body. We all go through this, most of us, dozens of times a day. It's the email, it's the name in the inbox, it's the voicemail, it's the looking to what, oh my God, I'm gonna be late for that meeting. All of those moments start a biochemical process. When we approach problems, <laughs> from a changed biochemical state, which is affecting our brain too, right? Because those biochemicals are going everywhere through our bloodstream. That's impacting and impairing our brain's ability to get it, see a clear solution. We're often identified with the emotion of the problem and it's harder to see with clarity a potential way forward.